Hey guys, it is October 14th, 10.06 a.m. It is a Saturday and I'm going to spend the day coding. Today, I'm probably going to fix some bugs that I had in our last session. And yeah, I don't think it's going to be easy. It's a render overflow problem, which means that there's a problem with box constraints in my UI, which means like the height and width aren't constrained somewhere and I need to find where and I haven't been able to nail it down. But hopefully today we're able to figure it out and fix it because it has been causing me a headache. Yesterday, or rather today, I was coding until 4 a.m. trying to fix the other bugs and I did. But yeah, we're gonna try to get that done. All right, so the problem that I'm dealing with right now is really weird flutter problems always have very large error stacks this is from one of my unit tests so we're going to try googling this error and finding out what exactly is causing this issue uh, we have some lines to look at and it's not very helpful because it just says hey there's a problem and it's with this widget which is pretty like high up in the hierarchy so not exactly sure what's going on yet, but we'll figure it out. So the amount of searching I had to do to figure out what exactly was wrong was insane. It was literally a mix of Stack Overflow and using Bard, but mostly Stack Overflow. Um, I looked at some Medium articles, but it was just so much reading and so much studying. And I feel like I haven't done this much studying in a while to understand what these giant error outputs were. I was really happy to find an article that actually worked. And it was kind of hard because Flutter has a lot of documentation and articles for when it first came out back. Well, actually, I don't know when it came out, but back in like 2019, like 2018 to 2020, there was a lot of flutter movement and then for some reason it died i don't know what the history is but it just made it a lot harder to find answers for current issues within the framework and lots of times it gets a little bit hard to find where exactly the problem is from maybe it's because i didn't go through all the flutter tutorials that are in the official documentation but i really wanted to hit the ground running and figure it out the painstaking way <laughs> which maybe might not be the solution for everybody, but it's what works for me. And lots of times the way that I see it, I'm eventually gonna find errors anyway. So I might as well hone my debugging skills and get better at figuring out what exactly is wrong, finding out how to fix it instead of avoiding it or creating wrappers or workarounds. And honestly, it ended up working out really well this time. Oh my god, I'm so happy I finally figured this out. I was trying to figure out what was causing my test to fail with this render flux overflow. And it turns out that if you have a nested row, that you need to use an expanded or flexible constraint twice, which is crazy. So pretty much the rule is that you're only allowed to use expand within a row. And so I thought I couldn't use expanded here, but I can because the second row is actually within another row, which is why expanded is allowed. But if I tried using expanded here, I would get an error. Wow. Okay. I am learning a lot today. So now that we're done with the modularity changes, 
I think that the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to continue with what we were supposed to do in the first place, which was finish up the buttons that come out of these modal sheets, or I guess the widgets that come out of these modal sheets. So yeah, I think there's a lot of things to do. This sticky header needs to have a cancel button. Well, actually, I don't know if I want a cancel button yet, but if I want some other button here, that'll have that will have to be done and i also have to make the widgets underneath so i'll get started on that So right now I am just looking at my unit tests. I haven't updated these in quite a while and since I've been adding a lot of different features and a lot of different improvements, I'm just trying to see if there's any way to improve my unit tests. But the thing is that I'm doing a lot of state changes through using change identifiers, which are pretty much like consumers or anything that updates the state of UI. And I'm not exactly sure if there's a way to pull the context or the build context to manipulate it and then test a UI that comes out of it. So I'm gonna look into this for a little bit and then see if I could do anything with that. So it is 12.34 p.m. here, which means that it's time for lunch. So I'm gonna take a quick break. I'm gonna have some lunch and then I'll get back to coding. All right, we are back. And I just had uh, sinigang, which is a Filipino dish. Uh, it's pretty good, but yeah, I took about a 30 minute break to eat, around 40 minutes. So going to get back into coding now. So I want to take this time to talk to you guys about debugging in general. It is not necessarily everyone's best time and lots of the times it can be very frustrating. And I wanted to give at least my thoughts on how to debug a little bit better or how to deal with the emotions of debugging because it can be frustrating sometimes. So. If you are ever upset about debugging, you've been staring at something for hours. Obviously, I was staring at this problem for hours. How do you deal with that? How do you not quit or burn out? And the best thing that I could tell people is you're always going to have debugging issues. You're always going to have errors. And the important thing to realize is that you're going to solve the error. Everything about computers happens because of human behavior. We tell the computer how to react. We give it the logic that is going to work. So if we find an error, all it means is that we did something wrong and that we have to find it out. And in a subsequent form of, a, of thought processing or pattern, if we are the ones that caused it, then it's only a matter of time before we figure out what we did wrong. And if you think of it that way, it becomes a lot easier to not think that there's a problem that you currently have that is unsolvable. Even if it's given by a teacher or by your manager or by someone who expects you to do a lot, you can look back at your frames of references from the past all the other times that you debug things even if it was as small as adding a plus or adding a semicolon those are all times where you had to deal with something you spent hours doing it and you eventually figured out what the problem was and so the next time that you get stuck just remember that you did this before you can do it again and that you'll get through it so that's the end of my rant. Enjoy the rest of the time lapse and I will see you in a little bit.
right so we are going to end it for today we have been officially coding for about 12 hours and i'm gonna show you guys what i did so far so i did a lot of changes towards the modal sheets i did a lot of work towards modularity and then i realized that i could be using a scaffold instead a scaffold bottom sheet and the reason i didn't use it before is because if you were to do a normal scaffold bottom sheet this nav bar still stays which is a huge problem because then it would just look ugly when you pull up the modal sheet but now that i'm more seasoned as a flutter developer i made it so that when you open the modal sheet it hides the nav bar and when you uh, close the modal bottom sheets it'll bring the, the nav bar back so pretty happy about this it looks a lot better architecture wise and it kind of aligns myself with the material design architecture so i'm really happy about that started working on each of the rows here and i'm super excited about this i'm still working on the done button i currently am trying to test to uh test the snack bar message for when certain uh times are incorrect so for example 9 p.m starting at 9 p.m is incorrect if we end at 5 p.m so it turns all of the colors red and it uh and eventually when i'm done with the coding pressing the done button when trying to do this will say something like this is an incorrect time please correct your time to make sure that the start time is before the end time or something like that and yeah i mean so far it's pretty good if i were to bring this to am it brings it back to black and you can see that the time is being documented uh for each one here i don't exactly know yeah it's recording for both which is awesome and if i were to close this you can now see that the time is updated for each row so super happy with this so far took about 12 hours mostly because i was doing a lot of studying and a lot of modularity changes so overall it was like a 8 out of 10 session learned a lot and i'm pretty proud of myself so it is 10 8 pm on october 14th and according to the stream timer, it has been roughly around 12 hours of coding. I spent the entire day coding, so I'm super happy about that. Overall, it was maybe around 11 hours. I took 30 minutes for lunch and 30 minutes for dinner. So it was an 11 hour coding session. I learned a lot. I had a lot of fun. <sighs> One step closer to getting this app into a minimum viable product. Thank you all for watching my video. If you enjoyed the content, make sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Peace.